these ten surahs, Madani surahs, from Hadid to Tahrim, they are in the form of five pairs. And the characteristics of Munafiqeen, their behavior, their attitude, this is a subject which has been discussed in very long details in Surah Al-Tawbah, Surah Al-Nisa, Surah Al-Ahzab, Surah Al-Muhammad, also Surah Al-Imran. But you know here, in 11 ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a summary, essence of all that discussion. But first of all we must understand, there is a very big misunderstanding about munafiqeen or nifaq. People usually think that munafiqeen are those who know that they are munafiq. They are intentionally munafiq. This is wrong. There could be and there can be and there were, there are examples in the Quran, intentional munafiqeen also who entered the fold of Islam only as spies or for some subversion. They knew they never accepted Islam. So we have the example in Surah Al Imran, Ayah 72. Some Jews, you know, they hash this conspiracy. That some of us should declare that we accept Islam in the morning. Then stay with the Prophet for the whole day. Then in the evening you declare, we have seen from very close quarters, he is nothing. So we are going back. We are going back from this Islam into our former religion. So maybe that some of the Muslims also then start thinking, okay, they were big people, very important people, and they came and they were very sincere and how close they remained the whole day with the Prophet ﷺ. They must have seen something on which, you know, they have decided to go back. So that was one of their plots. So for them in Surah Al-Ma'idah we have the wordings, وَقَدْ دَخَلُوا بِالْكُفْرِ وَهُمْ قَدْ خَرَجُوا بِهِ They entered Islam with kufr and they went out with kufr. Not a single moment came on them when they were real Muslims or real moments, not a single moment. But this is a special case. Maybe even today some Christians, some Jews, some Hindus may say that they have, they have become Muslims and they come to some Muslim country for spying or for some subversive, subversive activities, some terrorist activities, just possible. So they will be intentional bonafik. But mostly the, this disease which has been discussed in the Qur'an is of the unintentional munafiqeen who accepted Islam and they thought that this is good. It appealed to their minds and hearts. But when there was a call for sacrifice, now spend for the cause of Allah or now go to the war for the cause of Allah, now they, they had a second thought. First of all, they tried to make lame excuses. No, 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 I don't have that much, I can't spare anything. My wife is sick, I can't go for the battle, etc., etc. This is the beginning of a disease. Then when they saw that people laugh when we make excuses, then they started, oh my God, what I am saying is correct. You must believe me. Actually, I have this, you know, ulcer. I can't go. And the third stage is when they become enemies of Allah because now these Muslims, you know, because they were responding positively to every call of the Prophet. Whatever he said, they were said, the back, we are present. So now this attitude of the Muslims became unbearable for them. So enmity started for the Muslims and especially for the leaders of the Muslims, that is Muhammad sallallahu it is because of him that we are put to these tests every day. So this is the gradual evolution of that disease. What is the real cause? Love of this world. Love of wealth. This is the cause. 
they want that we should be Muslims and we should be having the salvation in the hereafter, but to sacrifice that is a different issue. This we had in Surah Al-Hajj. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ حَرْفٍ فَإِنَ سَابَهُ خَيْرٌ كِمَانَّ بِهِ وَإِنَ سَابَتْهُ فِتْنَةٌ إِنْ قَلَبَ عَلَىٰ وَجْيَهِ خَطِرَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ And again we had in Surah Al-Ankabut وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ فَإِذَا أُوزِيَ فِي اللَّهِ جَعَلَ فِتْنَةَ النَّاسِ كَعَزَابِ اللَّهِ and it takes the form of enmity of the Muslims. And then, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given in the second section of this surah, which is very small, three ayat, the treatment. What is the remedy of this disease? إِذَا جَاكَ الْمُنَافِقُونَ O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when the hypocrites come to you, قَالُوا and they say, نَشْهَدُوا إِنَّكَ لَرَسُولُ اللَّهِ we testify, we bear testimony to the fact that you are the messenger of Allah. وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ إِنَّكَ لَرَسُولُ Allah knows it very well that you are His messenger. Who knows it better than Allah that you are His messenger? But وَاللَّهُ يَشْهَرُ إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَقَاذِبُونَ Allah testifies that these munafiks, these hypocrites, they are telling a lie. They are telling a truth. Whatever they are saying is a truth. But they are liars because they actually don't believe. The belief of his messengerhood has gone away from their hearts. It did come to them. But then, when they started going back, stepping back, step by step, that belief had gone. Just as we had in Surah Al-Hadid, Bala, yes, you were with us in the world. وَلَكِنَّكُمْ فَتَلْتُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَتَرَبَّسْتُمْ وَرْتَبْتُمْ وَغَرَّتْكُمُ الْأَمَانِيَ وَتَّعْجَى عَمْرُ اللَّهِ وَغَرَّكُمْ بِاللَّهِ الْغَرُورِ فَالْيَوْمَ لَا يُخَذُ مِنْكُمْ فِرْيَتُمْ وَلَا مِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مَا وَاكُمُ النَّارِ هِيَ مَوْلَاكُمْ I am not feeling well, I can't go with you. By God, my wife is on the deathbed. How can I accompany you? So they have taken their, these oaths to be shields. فَسَبْدُوا عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ So they remain exempted from the jihad fi سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ here means what? The way of Allah. The jihad in the way of Allah. Now this is actually the sequence of these surahs. Surah Saf, jihad essential. And if you shun jihad, if you want to escape, then it is nifaq. So that is the sequence, logical, rational. اِتَّخَدُوا اَمَانَهُمْ جُنَّةً فَصَدُّوا عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ إِنَّهُمْ سَا مَا كَانُوا يَعْبَلُونَ Surely, evil is that what they have been doing. ذَالِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ Now this is the point which I have clarified already. ذَالِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ آمَنُوا they did come to believe. They entered Islam, not dishonestly, not to deceive. Summa kafaru, but then they disbelieved. They went back, but not openly. Remained within the pale of Islam, legal Islam. But from Iman, they have gone out. They had Iman, but due to this weakness in their characters, they don't want to sacrifice. Therefore, they stepped back and back and back. So that they are out of the fold of Iman, but not of Islam. They remain Muslim. Because Munafits, hypocrites, they are Muslims, legal Muslims. Then they disbelieved. And then the seal was put on their hearts. And now they don't have any understanding. And O oh Prophet, when you see them, their bodies please you. When yakulu tasbale kolehim, and when they say something, you listen attentively to them. Kan nahum khushubun musannada. They are like propped up beams of timber. They have nothing in them. Ya sabuna kulla sahatin alehim. They think that every shout is against them. Humul aduv. They are the real enemies. 
these kuffar of Makkah, they are open enemies. These are hidden enemies. They have to come from 300 miles to attack. And they are there in Medina, living side by side you with you. Humul adu, faster hum. So, beware of them. Qatalahum Allah, may Allah destroy them. Anna yufakun, from where they are being deviated. وَإِذَا قِلَ لَهُمْ تَعَالَوْا يَسْتَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ And when it is said to them, come on, come go to the messenger of Allah, he will ask the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you. لَوَّوْا رُوسَهُمْ They twist their heads. No, no, no. وَرَائِتُمْ يَسُدُّونَ وَهُمْ اسْتَغْبِرُونَ And you see them turning away. They don't want to come to you. They want, don't want to face you. وَهُمْ مُسْتَقْبِرُونَ They are arrogant. Why should we go? We have done nothing wrong. I was handicapped. I was sick. If I didn't go, I am not to blame. Why should I go to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to apologize? I have done nothing. سَوَاوْ نَلَيْهِ مَسْتَغْفَرْتَ لَهُمْ Now this ayah, which we have already read in Surah Al-Tawbah, in more severe form. سَوَاوْ نَلَيْهِ مَسْتَغْفَرْتَ لَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تَسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ it's equal to them, O Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whether you ask the forgiveness of Allah for them or you don't ask. لَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ Allah is not going to forgive them in any way. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَحْدِ الْقَوْبَ الْفَاسِقِينَ Verily Allah doesn't forcibly guide these transgressors. هُمُ الَّذِينَ Now, two things, very ugly things that Abdullah ibn Ubay said, and this was an incident. The Prophet of Allah وسلم, and the Muslims were coming back from the battle of Banil Mustariq. And they were halting somewhere. And there at a well, there was some conflict between a Muhajir and a, an Ansari. It flared. And Abdullah ibn Ubay, the chief of these Munafiqeen, he said at that time, number one, O oh people of Medina, you have supported these peoples, these poor hungry people who had come, fled from their homes, you supported them. And now they have come to this level that they challenge you. It's just like the same thing as we say in Arabic, some in Kalbak, Ya Kuluk. You feed your dog, when it is strong enough, it will bite you. Now they are biting us. It's due to our support that they are here. And if we withdraw our support, they will go away. This Iman and this and Jihad, they will forget everything. And then he said, if we return to Medina, the honorable people, the people, the sons of the soil of Medina, they will definitely expel these Muhajirin from Medina, who are very weak and mean people. Now these words were reported to the Prophet ﷺ. Abdullah ibn Ubay has said this. When the Prophet called him and asked for an explanation, he said, I didn't say, flat reply. But here Allah confirms that they, he did say this. هُمُ الَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ لَا تُنْفِقُوا عَلَى مَنْ إِنْدَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ حَتَّى يَنْفَضُّوا It is they who say that don't expend on those who are with Allah's messenger. Until they disperse, they will go away. وَلِلَّهِ خَزَائِنَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْلَرْضِ But for Allah, and to Allah belong the treasures of all the heavens and the earth. وَلَكِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَا يَفْتَهُونَ But these hypocrites, they don't understand it. It's the shortcoming of their understanding. And they are saying, if we return to Al Madina, the mightier ones of us will expel the weaker ones. While the real honor and might is belongs to Allah and His Messenger and the believers. وَلَكِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ But these hypocrites don't know. So it can go to this level. This disease of nifaq starts from where? 
weakness of character. Not ready to sacrifice for the sake of truth. Stepping back. This is the basic diagnosis. But then steps. Lame excuses. Then, you know, taking oath, wrong oaths, then becoming a sort of enemy to the Muslims, to the true movements. When this disease reaches this stage, now it is, it cannot be cured, incurable. And at that stage, even the prophets asking for forgiveness for them is not granted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the prognosis of the disease. Now, treatment on the treatment side, we know there is one preventive treatment. The other is the curative treatment. Preventive treatment is, Ya ayu allazeena amanu la tulhiku amwalukum wa la auladukum an zikrillah wa maya falzalika fa ulaika humul khasiru. O you who believe, let not your rishis or your children divert you or hinder you from the remembrance of Allah. Overindulgence in worldly affairs, in riches, in trade, in children, overindulgence, which makes you forget Allah. This is the basic cause. If you keep remembrance of Allah in your mind and heart all the time, this is the prevention of this disease. Then the faq will not be able to enter your heart. If there is Allah in your heart, how can the faq enter? But when the Allah is not there in, in your heart, now, as they say in Persian, Khana e Khalida Deumi Girat. If the house is vacant, well, the jinns come and occupy it. If the heart, your heart is vacant from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the faq would come. Then Shaitan comes, Satan comes, and he whispers, blows into it. So the preventive treatment is. Keep remembering Allah at all times, in every condition, standing, sitting, on your sides. Never forget Allah. This is the prevention. Whosoever does this, that he forgets Allah due to this occupation in this world, then they are the losers. Now what is the curative treatment? If you know this infection, you have it. Then, the cure for nifaq is infaq. What is infaq? Spend. Spend the way of Allah. Spend. And we had in Surah Al-Hadid, these two words, آمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَأَنْفِقُوا بِالْمَارَةِ جَعَلَكُمْ مُسْتَقْلَ فِي نَفِي So, because the real cause is love of this world. And the biggest manifestation of the love of this world is the love of wealth. Give this wealth away. Give this wealth away. إِنَّ الْمُصَدِّقِينَ وَالْمُصَدِّقَاتِ وَأَقْرَضُ اللَّهَ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا This is the way in which you know if some infection has already taken place, it will be cleared. This is the remedy for it. This is the curative treatment. وَأَنْفِقُوا مِنْ مَارَدَقْ بَاكُمْ And expand from whatever we have given you. مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَاتِيَ أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَوْتِ Until before that time that some of you finds this death before him. فَيَقُولَ And then he will say, رَبِّ لَوْ لَا أَخْرْتَنِي لَا أَجَلْ قَرِيبٍ فَأَصَدَّقَ وَاكُمْ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ Says, Oh my Lord, wouldst thou not respite me to a near term? Please defer it for some time. So that I would give alms, everything I will give in your way, in charity. And I will become a very righteous person. وَلَنْ يُؤَخِّرَ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِذَا جَاءَ جَلُهَا and take it for granted that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never defer the time of death of any person. When that fixed time comes for him, the death is to come. Wallahu khabirun bima ta'amaloon. Allah very well knows what you are doing.